Hello and welcome to the vlog. Uh, okay, here we go. Episode one, a Dan's EP. Right, uh, this is going to be a series of, I think, four vlogs. So uh, today we're going to be looking at the songs and songwriting uh, and the gear that I use to get the arrangements ready f for recording. Uh, episode two, we're going to look at recording the drums. Episode three, we're going to look at recording guitars. And episode four, we're going to look at the production, mixing, and getting it all together so you have something presentable. Uh, okay, but first of all, let's talk about why I'm doing this. I was in a band called Tin Spirits uh, for 10 years, and we made a couple of albums. It was great fun, and uh, but anyway, that band came to an end. And around the same time, I stopped doing cover gigs. I started to have this idea, maybe I could write some songs. I see, in Tin Spirits, I had always written songs, but I never considered myself a songwriter. But when we did the, the demos for the Ox over at Real World Studios, and Mick and I wrote those two songs, and it was so, it was so much fun, maybe start to think, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe there's something there, maybe, maybe I've got a few songs in me that I can um, record. We were in Germany at uh, the Tomann Gear University, and this is in 2019. And while we were there, we'd spent a week with a bunch of other YouTubers and, and artists, and it was such a creative atmosphere. It was really inspiring. So I made the decision in Germany while we're at Tomann. I decided I'm going to do it, uh, an EP. So the idea was that I was going to write and record these songs at home, and do as much as humanly possible in my tiny little box room. Um, you know, record the guitars and bass and do the vocals. So when it comes to drums, you know, I spoke to Dougie, my drummer, and you all know him, he's been on the show loads. Dougie's been playing drums for me since about 2005, and I love making music with the guy. So when I talked to him about the project, Dougie said, yep, I'm in. Um, so this is something that we're going to do together. We're calling it Overlook Hotel. The great thing about making music with other people, if it's someone that you can be genuinely honest with, then I find that you know the music often can be so much better for it. Um, now, a good example is, you know, I love everything that Neil Finn writes, but I'm especially fond of everything he did in Crowded House. Um, just having other humans around while you're making music, I think, can really add to the whole thing. And you'll see, actually, at the end of this show today, how Dougie impacted on one of the songs in a very big way. So before we get to the recording gear and such, I just want to quickly talk about the songs. So the idea for this vlog, uh, there are four songs on the EP, but we're going to focus on one song, uh, a song called Cortisone. And so we'll look at the inception of it and the different demos and the arrangements and, uh, and then right through at the end of the last show, we should have um, the fully produced, recorded song. For anyone that's not written songs before, it can seem really intimidating. And a big part of the reason I wanted to do this was to encourage you guys to just have a go. And I think it's something that um, most, if not all of us, have the potential to do. I mean, the reason you play guitar in the first place is you like the way it sounds, you know. So it's not a big stretch from there to create some chords and create a melody. But one thing that can be really challenging, if, especially if you haven't done it before, is lyrics. Okay, so a quick name drop moment. My wife and I were out a few months ago and we ran into Andy Partridge. Um, Andy Partridge is a true genius. Uh, so you all know him from XTC, but he's done loads of solo stuff as well. And he just, he is so creative and inventive with the way that he approaches music. So that night we're talking about songwriting and he said a couple of things to me that I will never forget. I said, Andy, how do you approach melodies? You always come up with these stunning, these beautiful melodies. He said, it's really simple. He said, the simpler your chord structure is, the more elaborate that your melodies can be. But he said, the more complex your chord structure is, the simpler the melodies have to be. I'm like, whoa, 
you know, mind blown. I'd never thought of it like that before. And so I said to him, you know, where, does, where do your lyrics come from? And he said, oh, it's really simple. He said, I'll write a piece of music and then I just think about the way that that music makes me feel. And then I'll write that. And that's the lyrics. And I love that because, you know, music makes you feel a certain way. And if you, if you try to express that in words, there's the lyrics for your song. Okay, so let's have a look at the song Cortisone. Um, Cortisone, when I, when I wrote this, I was thinking about a very dear friend of mine, a guy called Mark Cuff. So Mark and I were in a band in Australia for years and years, and we had an original thing going, and we were writing and recording all these songs, and it just seemed that no matter what we did, we couldn't really catch a break with it. Um, so it was sort of inspired by, you know, Mark and our experiences together, and one of those people that that you have in your life that just makes a massive, massive impact on you. Well, Mark was that for me. Um, so when I wrote this, I was basically thinking of Mark and, and our, the, the time that we spent making music together and, um, and all the stuff we went through. Now that's not to say that the lyrics are um, in any way autobiographical or encyclopedic or anything like that. Um, so that, you know, I was sort of just narrating my feelings when I was thinking about the music. So that's how I started writing this song. Now, fortuitously, when I was in Germany, there was a company there called Isotope, and they had released a product called Spire. So what the Spire is, it's basically, it's a portable eight track recorder. It has a built-in microphone, so you don't even need to plug a mic into it. And it connects to your phone via an app. And what you can do, is sit down and really easily record up to eight tracks and then mix them all on your phone. Uh, Isotope are, are very well known for their software, their audio software. So it includes a bunch of um, Isotope plugins and things that clean up the audio and just make it sound really great. But the idea about this is it's really quick, it's simple, it's portable. This, the built-in microphone is fantastic. So what I'm gonna play you now is the first demo version, or just a part of the first demo version, of the track Cortisone. This is recorded at three o'clock in the morning at the hotel in Germany. Um, I had uh, a Gretsch electric guitar, but I'm just playing it acoustically into the microphone. And so I think I did two tracks of that, and then six tracks of vocals really quietly, sort of almost whispering into the mic. Um, so, here we go, just this, this is the first snippet of the idea of Cortisone. There's a lion lives within your face on Cortisone Hail Mary full of grace She's never home Way you did everything the cut to the bone in glory was the way you sing Okay, so you can hear the chords, you can hear the melody, um, the lyrics are already taking shape, and you can hear the harmonies. I've now got the basic idea for the song down, and I need to start working on the arrangement. So it is time for me to dip my toe in the very unfamiliar waters of DAW, digital audio workstations. Um, I, like I said, I'd never, never really recorded with any of this stuff before. 
But one thing I did have uh, on my MacBook Pro, it comes with GarageBand. So I did some research and found out that loads of people get great results recording with GarageBand. So I thought I'd start there. Now to do this, I needed two things. I needed an interface and I needed a microphone. So the first interface I used, I went out and grabbed this Zoom Tap 2. Uh, it's a really simple audio interface, plugs straight into the MacBook via the lightning cable connector and enables me to plug in guitars and microphones and whatever and record directly into GarageBand. So one thing became really apparent at this stage and that was uh, that getting a guitar sound that I was happy with wasn't going to be easy. I spent ages just manipulating the guitars, uh, the built-in amplifiers and things in GarageBand and it was you know, fine to, to have a play with but as far as getting a professional sounding uh, you know, guitar tones that I'm happy with, um, you know, on something that I'm happy to share with people, these tones had a long way to go. What I did that helped me massively was I grabbed a couple of valve preamps. I grabbed my Kingsley Page and I grabbed the Big Trees from Audio Kitchen. And having some, uh, I wasn't getting overdrive from these, I was just using these as a valve preamp to go into the interface. And it gave me a lot better feel you know still a long way to go from them being you know, record ready but it meant that I could take my valve preamp plug it into the interface and then manipulate the amplifiers that come with GarageBand and you know we could start getting the ideas of the songs and the arrangements together. So one of the things I wanted to start doing at this stage is working on an arrangement with real drums. So we set Dougie up in this room uh, we used a Focusrite Claret 8 Pre preamp uh, to give me more than two inputs. We only used three. Uh, we used a thing called the Glenn Johns uh, drum miking technique. Basically, it's a mic on the kick drum and two overheads. They're used very famously uh, for recording some of the Led Zeppelin drum sounds. This is my first time doing this. I didn't really know what I was doing, but we were able to capture some drum sounds uh, that were sort of good enough to get the arrangement together. The next thing I needed was a better microphone. So I bought a Rhodes NT2A, and the idea was I would have this set up in the room and I could just plug straight in and record with it, and it was really good. I have got a frequency in my voice that I don't like, it's sort of an upper mid frequency, and the Rode almost accentuates it. So I knew that I still had a long way to go sonically, but I could start getting the arrangements together. So what we'll listen to now is my first attempt at any sort of mix on GarageBand. So everything's going through the Zoom Tac 2 with the drums and with the vocals recorded on the NT2A. Did everything you cut to the In glory I heard you sing But they'd never know So believe it or not, you know, I labored for hours over that mix. I've got a long way to go when it comes to learning this stuff. Um, but I was able to get a, an arrangement of the tune out and it has some drums on it, you know, so that was a big step forward. So as some of you will know, uh, we use the Universal Audio Apollo 8Ps, I think they are, to record all the guitars and vocals and everything uh, with that paddle show. And when we went to those, it was such a massive step change for us and the quality of the audio uh, things started sounding real and um, yeah it was a, it was a, it was a big deal for us what I didn't know is that Universal Audio made a smaller desktop version of their Apollo and this is it this is the Apollo twin so it has the same preamps the same um, you know potential for audio quality as the big version it's just a smaller desktop version and funnily enough when I grabbed this it was actually the first moment after listening to some of the audio back that I've recorded with it, it was the first moment I thought 
I actually might be able to pull this off. Now, at the same time that I upgraded to the Apollo Twin, I also upgraded to Logic uh, from GarageBand. Now, why did I do that? Uh, the recording quality was the same, um, but it just gave me some more options and a bit uh, better control over the audio tracks. So I upgraded my audio interface, I upgraded my software, and I've also upgraded my microphone. Uh, we use Sontronic mics uh, for that pedal show, and they're ribbon mics to record the amplifiers. And we have a couple of their microphones. And one microphone that we had kicking around was the Sontronics Orpheus. And Mick said, oh, you should try this out for your voice. I think it might work really well. And lo and behold, it sounds fantastic. But I think, I mean, you can see already I'm starting to disappear down a gear rabbit hole with this. And it's like anything, the more you get into it, the more you learn, the more you know that there, you need to know more. So with the new interface and software, I thought I'd work on the guitar arrangements a little bit more. So here's a quick snippet of the new arrangement uh, using the valve preamps plugged straight into the Apollo Twin and then manipulating the built-in amplifiers in Logic. So at this point, the song is basically arranged and ready to be recorded properly. We have one last rehearsal before we're heading over to record the drums. And then this happened. That's right, Dougie had an idea and it has changed the entire feel of the song. And I love it. I love the energy it's brought to the track. Um, and this is one of the things I love about working with other musicians is they come up with things that you would never dream of. So there you go guys, that's where we're at at the moment with this song. Uh, we'll be heading over to record some drums at the That Pedal Show studio with Fraser. So Fraser is our production assistant and he's a great producer and he's gonna show us the techniques that he uses to mic real drums and get some great drum sounds. I hope you found that at least a little bit interesting. Um, I was really keen to document this process and what it's like to start from basically absolute zero. Uh, I mean, it's been so much fun just to spend time, you know, being creative and making music. You know, whether it is just humming a tune into your phone uh, or sitting down with software and writing some tunes at home, um, you know, I think that's something as guitar players, we all have the potential. We've all got a song in us, you know. I really believe that. So hopefully um, this journey might motivate a couple of you to do the same thing. Cool. Okay. Have a great day and see you for episode two, the drums. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.